All right, we're back. I got all kinds of parts today. So I got all these boxes here. I got all these boxes over here. All kinds of junk's been coming in, I guess. So, and eventually I get work back in the motors here again. Not right this minute. All right, let's see what's in this box. I'm gonna guess another head or cylinder or something. Stupid camera stand doesn't work with a squat. Here we go. Yeah, so real hard to move up and down. Okay, so let's see what's in here. It's about the width and size of a cylinder or a head. Something I definitely don't need. Or need. Yeah. Oh, this has got other crap in here. Let's see. It's got individual surprises. I'm going to find that missing oil pump I have. 45. I probably threw it away. Make sure you always check your paper for any extra parts so you don't throw them away. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Okay. Paper. Paper. All right, let's see what we got over here. Camera down a little bit more. I don't like this thing. So I see it. If you get it too loose, it just falls all over the place. But you got it. You can't move the stupid thing. I don't like this stand. It's garbage. You can't rotate it. That was a rotating feature. Up. Am I confusing everybody right now? There's a knob over here. So whenever you get a new tool, you got to figure out how to use it. See, the knob is super loose, and this thing doesn't want to. It's not concealed. You turn a knob, it doesn't make the same change. It just works, and then it doesn't work, and then it works again. And you got to unscrew the knob. This thing just doesn't work for squat. Cheats down. Garbage. So the old one. I get used to it. Oh yeah, let's see what's in here. Um, ooh, that's a weird sound. It's two pieces. I have no idea what that is. Yeah, I don't know. It's square. Maybe a trap door for a sportsman, maybe? I don't know. It doesn't feel like that. It's rattling. It's loose. It's got parts in it. Ah, brake slings. This is going to make a mess. There'll be rivets everywhere over here. There you go. Let's see what we got in here. Ah, this is why I have extra rattles. Okay. Good stuff. I like this. Good crap. So this is brand new asbestos brake linings for, uh, what year are these things from? 1933, late model stuff, Ray Bestus brand. Oh yeah, they're definitely asbestos, you can smell it. Good stuff. That's the stuff that works. No linings, no shoe rivets. These are the old brake shoes for a 45. For front and early rear. And the difference between earlier ones yet and the 20s is they change the rivet patterns around a little bit on them. And this here looks like a kickstand spring for a 45. Otherwise known as a jiffy stand spring. That is not a brake shoe spring. But that's what they put in there. Just because it comes that way doesn't mean it's correct. So this is your pivot area right here and this is where the cam action goes. And we just happen to have the pivot and the cam to go with it. So that goes in there like this. See they got an offset on the shoe, you got flat on the bottom. And the top is where the where it's recessed. That's how they work. So 
So that goes like that. That's a pivot. That's what you call the pivot. And that bolts onto your backing plate. And that's adjustable there to adjust the brake shoe offset so you can center them in your drum. And this here is the cam. And they're offset so they have a marking on them. So you got to put them the way they say for them to work correctly. So that goes in here between your shoes like that. And as you rotate it, it opens the shoes up. Oop, get down and see better. Oop. Must be in there like that though. There you go. So that's how they work. Either it goes that way or this way, depending on which bike it's on. So the shoes are the same on both sides. There's no leading leading or trailing shoe back in the day. They were equal. They didn't notice differences back then of doing stuff. So this one here. And they don't have the offset in it. We got wear in here. <laughs> it's been worn, but you know, this shoe's damaged here. Now to fix these, you go in and just braise them up and grind them back flat again and use them. But they're not exactly a hunt. They're not flat straight across because they have an angle built in because they're made to be round when you got this in there. So there's a slight angle difference in these things. They're not 100% flat. So it goes in there like that. Like so this shoe's damaged. And this here is the brake lever that goes on the end of your cam. And that's where you get your strength to work the shoe work. Boop, 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 like that. And the early ones in the 30s had four holes in it. So you got uh, solo, this right here is the second hole usually. And then trike was way out here. And that gave you more pull, but it gave you more leverage on the shoe. So you can stop harder, but you used, used up all your free play. So it didn't really work really good, but when you're a bit closer here, you had more you had more travel, but you had less mechanical advantage. You had to squeeze harder. So, but they had adjustability in here. Later on, they just put one hole in there, and you couldn't do anything. So in the 30s, they figured you're smart enough to put it where you needed it to be. But uh, they found out early on that Pete riders are not smart. Neither are the Harley mechanics. But uh, anyway, these are all nice parts. So. This one here looks like it's probably new. That would be called NOS, new old stock. That's a good item. This one here, I don't see much wear on it, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's brand new also. These came out in 28, I think it's the first year of a front brake on a 45. It actually was a single cylinder back then, because first year of a 45 is 29. So this would be on the old uh, 3050 single. Was it 30? No, it was a. Uh, wasn't a 3050, it was a 21 inch or something, I forget, it was a, it was a 350 motor, I think, not a 500cc motor, but uh, anyway, that's that piece, and the pivot goes back to the same time frame, so I'm not seeing a lot of wear on these parts, so these might be brand new parts, which means these are 70 year old parts, fine, these are not new, these are definitely used. Now you take the brake shoes and you see if the lining holes line up. And if you notice they line up pretty good. But you see how it's backwards because you see it's short here, long here. So this one goes the other direction. That does not line up. What if you put it way back here? This shoe does not match. See how it's the mirror image of it? It does not line up. It's a mirror image, which means it's the same but opposite. If you flip it around the other way, see it makes no difference. It's a mirror image. And this is obviously stacked against something for a long time. I put a wear mark in that. So let's go check this one. And this one here is also a mirror image. And see it does not fit this shoe. So now if you think we just flip the shoe over and it fits. No, it still does not fit. It's a mirror image. If you turned it inside out and bent it the other way around, it would fit. So see, then it would work. But then it would be all screwed up and wrong. So these are for a different application, this part number here. So it's a 451-33, which is a 1933 part. So this is probably fitting a VL or something like that, brake shoe instead of a 45. Or this might be a late 45 shoe, and these fit a RL shoes, which are 36 and earlier. So, but whatever, they, they don't match. The diameter is correct because, see, it's the same arch, same, same curve. So we know that it's the same brake shoe. The drum diameter is the same, and the width is good. It just doesn't match this shoe. 
Now back in the day you would find a lot of shoes that had double bolt patterns in them. They would drill the holes in here to make it fit with this. But it doesn't fit this one. Doesn't mean it doesn't fit a different one. It just doesn't fit that one. Now if these are not over bent they will not match. But see how these kind of match? That means they came packed like that. See how they fit on top of each other? See this way like this. See how it doesn't fit? You have to push it together. It's best not to do that. You'll break them. So when these things come packed up they're all packed up in paper. They had a little bag of uh, rivets right in here and they were all wrapped up in paper is how they came originally. The ones that were in the 30s they just had a little piece of red tape that went around. A little cellophane style tape. And the rivets were in a bag. But anyway, they're still pretty good. I like stuff like that. Because when you use those, they stop. Alright, that's it for uh, brake shoes.